Hello and welcome to the Leathercraft Masterclass with me, Phil. And in today's video, I'm going to be discussing handles, specifically post handles or top frame briefcase handles, also known as doctor's bag handles. This is the style that I'm talking about, okay? So this is many different names. There's quite a lot to its history, where it comes from, what it's used on, different types of bags, attache cases, guitar cases, luggage. If you haven't already, there is a free guide, which is a free video detailing exactly how to choose leather, what kind of leathers to look out for, tannery tricks, and all the information you need to choose the finest quality leather. There is also a 20 page tool buyer's guide which shows you exactly what tools you need at what stage in your craft. So if you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced, it's all in there and it will show you what you need and very importantly, what you don't need so that you can save money, avoid buying bad leather, bad tools and get exactly what you need to make the best possible leather goods. So don't forget, click the description below, get your free guide and I'll email it straight to you. So I have here some information about these handles, a little bit about the history and a little bit about where it comes from. And yesterday I put out a course on the Leathercraft Masterclass, the making of a post handle, which documents exactly how to make one of these. This is in fact the particular post handle that I made on the course. Nice, beautiful polished edges there. And we have our handle attachments, which are called the posts, which give the handle its name. So that course is now available. It's a two part course, one hour each. So there's two hours of information which explain exactly how to make them so you can make one yourself. Now in this video, I'm gonna be going through a little bit about the different names, a little, touching a little bit upon the history of it, but also I've taken some questions from Instagram stories that people have had specifically about these handles. So some good information. And if you're interested in making one of these, this information should be quite helpful. So I'm gonna go on Instagram Live now and we can also take some questions in real time. Checking connection, you are now live. Hello, welcome guys. Hello from California. Hello from the United Kingdom. Okay, so these handles, as I mentioned, these are called post handles, but they're also going by many different names. So you'll see these called sometimes D handles, okay? Sometimes they're called C handles, and you can see why. Top frame handles, they're also called post handles, which is what I call them, pillar handles, which comes from the handle attachment, because you have, you normally, two pillars and a crossbar called a post, so pillars and post, and that is the handle attachment, so that's where it actually gets its name from. So it's also called a pillar post handle as well. Some people refer to it as that. Um, can I join you in your studio to be your assistant? <laughs> yeah, sure, I could use the help to be honest. <laughs> um, but it's also called the Dully's handle. Now, the name the Dully's handle comes from the Dully's bag, okay? And often I hear people calling it the Dully's bag. Dully's is actually uh, kind of a, a Japanese Anglo name for the top frame briefcase. The name apparently comes from John Foster Dulles, which was the US Secretary of State, who visited Japan and with him bought a top frame briefcase, okay? So think doctor's bag, Gladstone bag, that kind of thing. Now, you, there are pictures of him uh, on the internet with this famous bag that he seemed to carry everywhere he went. And the Japanese kind of obviously must have been impressed by him um, because they named that style of bag after him. So in Japan, it's known as the Dully's bag. So outside of Japan, it's mostly known as the top frame briefcase or the doctor's bag, sometimes a kit bag, sometimes a Gladstone bag, depending on the design, of course. But that's where that name comes from, which I thought was quite interesting as well. Uh, really, I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm searching for a chance outside of Egypt. I have a good experience in leather crafting. Cool. Send me a DM after the live. Okay. So yesterday I released a two part course, the making of a post handle. And they're an hour long each. There's a lot of information to get through. So I've kind of broken it up into two courses. So it's a little bit easier to digest for you guys. Um, but it documents the making of a post handle from the pattern all the way up to the final product. Uh, this is the handle itself. This was the one 
uh, made in the course. So I'll show a little bit of a closer look to you guys. So nice glossy edges on that one. So that's another feature of this course is teaching you how to get these edges. Now this isn't a burnish and it's not edge paint, okay? So if you're wondering what it is, I explain further in the course. It doesn't really have a name to be honest. These are the handle attachments. Now these are made by Wouter Leather. These are solid stainless steel. These are really kind of like the pillar post of the handle attachment where it gets its name from. So that is the handle. Now normally, and this is a little bit of a change in the design. Normally, the external wrap is actually stitched in the center and then placed in between the layers of leather because this is obviously a laminated leather core. And then it is wrapped around there. So it is stuck in place, a stitch seam, and then it is wrapped. On this one, I've modified the design slightly, as I always like to do, always try and improve on things so that there is no seam, which makes it a lot more comfortable to hold. So that's a unique feature of this course. Now you may have noticed that this handle is in fact quite small, okay? Normally it has around a four and a half or five inch center to center. Now the center lines are the center of this part of the handle and the center of this part of the handle, okay? This is a 3.5. Your average is going to be 4.5 to 5, okay? So this, one of the questions that I've had is, can this be scaled up? The answer is absolutely, it can be scaled up. So you can scale up your pattern when you print it out. Uh, I believe it's a 43% increase will get you a 5-inch center to center. All right, uh, I've got some questions on here. What is your opinion about aniline leather? Uh, Usually it's my preference, uh, aniline or semi-aniline. For those that don't know, aniline leather is, uh, is just dyed leather, so it doesn't have a pigment, so you can kind of see through the grain a little bit more. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to check out YouTube. It's really impressive how tight you are able to wrap the leather. Is it wet molded? No, it's not. There's no wet molding involved in this one. Uh, <laughs> I explained a lot further in the course, obviously, so you can actually see how it's done but a lot of it comes from the cut of the leather as well. So it has to be pre-stretched in certain high stress areas because there's parts that are under heavy compression and there are parts under heavy tension and you have to wrap it and it's a lot of finger manipulation, but I show the technique in the course. You have to wrap it which in a way that minimizes any creases. So when you're finished, you're not left with heavy creasing in the corners otherwise on the insides here, these are the areas under most compression and they are really susceptible to wrinkling and creasing uh, compared to the outside, which is all stretched out. So there's a, there's a lot to it. It's better if I could actually show you, um, but yes, uh, there is definitely a technique, but it comes down to the type of leather, the thicknesses, the cut of the leather, directional cut, um, pre-stretching and also the shape of the pattern to match the shape of the handle at the same time. So there's quite a few different parameters uh, that go into actually making sure that it's smooth all the way around. I'll check it out. Yeah, no worries. Cool. Atelier 56. How are you? Atelier 56 underscore. I'll take it. Atelier 56 was taken. <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. Okay, so I did yesterday take some questions on Instagram stories. So just a short handful of, of questions so that I can help answer some of them that you guys have about the post handle. So the first one I kind of asked it earlier, can this handle be made in a larger size? This is actually the prototype. Uh, yes, it can be made in a larger size. It just needs scaling up. So the PDF pattern that comes with this course, included with the course, can be scaled up. Um, I'm going to be cutting one of these in half, in fact. Obviously not the good one. <laughs> uh, one of the prototypes. I'm going to be uh, cutting it in half so you guys can actually see what's on the insides. I'll probably be doing that as a YouTube video uh, coming up. Okay, so can this handle be made in a larger size? Yes, it can. Absolutely. It just mean, needs scaling up. I designed this so it's not, the proportions haven't been modified to be smaller. 
so that you could scale it. You could make a 10 inch handle if you, I don't know what you would be doing one of those, but you, it would still be of the correct scale is uh, what I would recommend. But please also remember if you scale up, know how much you scaled up, say 43% was over this one, will get you a five inch center handle. Um, but you'll need to increase the leather thickness in certain parts by 43%. Uh, so just, you know, bear those uh, things in mind. Everything has to be increased in that size including your hardware. Okay, so next question. Uh, how much do these handles cost to make? Uh, can you use exotics like crocodile, ostrich, or snake? Um, if, you've got, if you've got the leather in stock already, probably a few dollars or a few pounds. I mean, it's a, it's a scaled down version of, uh, of the handle. I've done that for a number of reasons, but definitely one of them is it's more economic so you can get a first try because your first try isn't gonna be your best one. Okay, it doesn't matter how good you are at leather craft, your second one is always around 50% better, your third one about 25% better than that, the fourth one 12.5% better than that, and it just keeps on going up incrementally. If you're very good at leather craft, your first one will be pretty good, pretty decent, um, but that, I find that uh, incremental ratio is, is usually pretty much standard. Um, so I made it smaller so that you can kind of try it, maybe use some scrap leather or lesser quality pieces of leather, just get a feel for the design, how it all works, how it's put together, how to wrap it. So you can kind of make all your mistakes on the first one and it hasn't really cost you a lot. Uh, but how much does it cost? I mean, if you have no leather, you've got to buy, you know, two or three hides of, of different kind, different thicknesses of leather. So you've got the filler, you've got the partition layer and you've got the external wrap as well. So if you don't have that, uh, it might cost a, a couple of hundred bucks, it depends. But if you have the leather already, then just a few dollars worth of leather. It doesn't take a lot of uh, surface area to make one. Uh, second part of that question is, can you make these handles from crocodile, ostrich, or snake? And the answer is absolutely. But you have to remember that the leather wrap has to have a little bit of give to it. So if you're using something that's quite rigid because some crocodile pieces can be quite rigid depending on how it's tanned. Um, that might then make it very difficult and you might get a lot more creasing on the internal corners. So it's uh, important to note that, you know, probably the best is gonna be garment leather to, to be honest on a wrap, but ostrich, absolutely. Ostrich makes for a really cool striking looking handle. I've seen these in ostrich before, especially in some older vintage uh, luggage. Uh, they look fantastic. Snake, I probably wouldn't, it really depends, but it's, um, I don't think snake is the best for handles in general, just because it has that kind of papery scale that kind of sticks up. Um, it can look quite good on the panels of a bag, but for handles themselves, I don't think it would be that great, but that's personal preference more than anything. Okay. Um, so that's that question. Now the next question is, are these good to use on small bags or clutches? And the answer is absolutely. They look really cool. Um, if you make uh, a small bag or a clutch, especially if it has kind of like a doctor's bag feel to it or maybe a traditional look to it, um, if it's a very contemporary style, then perhaps not because the post handle is a very traditional looking handle. But absolutely it can be used on a number of things from small bags and clutches up to guitar cases and luggage. So it's a very, very versatile design, very, very strong and very comfortable too. So can they be used in small bags and clutches? Yes, but much depends on the design. If it's a cool traditional looking design, then uh, yes, it does. Uh, this is an interesting question. I've, I've had a couple of these asking about the inside of the handle. Is it wood inside or bonded leather scrap is the exact question itself. Uh, no, it's not wood. No, it's not scrap leather. It is full grain vegetable tanned leather. So the, the handle is solid leather after reinforcements, of course, to give uh, strength in key areas. It's very important to note that this handle is solid leather. Um, age is better, looks better. There's an, actually a number of different materials that have been used over the years. A very popular one is buying uh, metal, usually zinc, and it's like a shell, and you wrap your leather around it and then close the shell, bend it in position, and then stitch around the top. 
Uh, what that does is it gives kind of like a, a very simple way of making a post handle. You just have to worry about the wrap. You don't have to worry about anything else. Um, you can still buy these online, but they tend to they tend to sound a little bit hollow, if you know what I mean. They sound a little bit dead, so it's not my favorite way of, uh, of doing it. I'd rather make these from scrap, which gives a much warmer, much richer feel. Not to mention that um, kind of metal handles, if they rub against anything, if they knock against a brick wall or something like that, they, they scuff quite badly because it's metal underneath. And once the leather is scraped on top, because it's not flexible underneath, it can actually show through on the metal, so it can wear out quite easily. So no, it's not wood, it's not bonded leather scrap, it's not plastic, it's not cork, which is another one that's very popular. Um, it is solid leather. Do you need to use metal parts to stiffen? So the next question is asking about metal parts. Do you need to use metal parts on the inside in order to stiffen, can this be done without metal? And the answer is absolutely. Um, the ideal leather to use is a very, very stiff vegetable tanned leather. So I would recommend, just because it's veg tanned leather doesn't necessarily mean it's the best leather to use inside a post handle. So it has to be very, very firm vegetable tanned leather, the kind of leather that you would make a firm belt out of, okay? So English bridal leather, um, something like uh, russet, so undyed vegetable tan leather. Soling leather is a good one for shoemaking. So the soles of leather is, you know, it's usually a very hard wearing, very stiff, uh, thick piece of leather. That's ideal as well. Another one is floor tile leather, which is in my opinion, probably the best. So leather that they use to make floor tiles usually about five millimeters thick, so it's a very, very heavy hide, um, but it's compressed heavily, so it's very, very hard. It's almost wood-like in nature. Hard to work with, very challenging to work with because it's the hardest leather that you can find, but it definitely makes the best handle. Does that mean that if you're using a larger handle and you're using it for heavy, heavy luggage, that you wouldn't use any metal reinforcement? You absolutely can. It really depends on its use. If it's going to get a lot of use and it's going to be carrying very heavy loads quite often, then I probably would use a steel piece in the partition in the center just to give it a little bit more strength uh, overall, but uh, it would just be a small piece. Hello, how are you? Very good. I'm very good, thank you. Nice watch, uncle. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so can it be done without metal? Yes, and this, uh, this course, the making of a post handle, is done without metal, except for the tools, of course. Uh, next question. Now, this applies to a lot of people out there. Can a beginner like me handle this? Close brackets, pun intended. <laughs> Can a beginner handle this, or is this for Jedi level crafters only? Now, that's a very good question. I wouldn't say that this course is necessarily ideal for beginners, but can a beginner do it? Yes, you know, uh, my mother could do this course. Wouldn't look very good, okay? So it wouldn't be a very good handle. But yes, it's possible that you can do it. I think the question is probably along the lines of, can a beginner do this and end up with the same level of handle as you or very near? Uh, I would say unlikely unless you're particularly skilled or very good with your hands. Um, but I would say a beginner is going to get good very, very quickly doing a course like this. And because it doesn't use up a lot of leather, there's nothing wrong with having a go, watching the video, trying to copy everything that I'm doing, and then reenacting that in your own version, taking a look at it, critiquing your own work, and then trying to, you know, perhaps even writing down what you would do differently next time, what you did well, what mistakes you did, and then do a second version. Use what you've learned from the first one on the second one. And um, you'd be surprised how quickly you can get good at doing something like this. But it is considered a more technical course, so it'd be middle, medium to advanced, so the novice to advanced uh, shouldn't have too much problem with this. A beginner, it's gonna be a little bit daunting. I can see it being uh, a little bit intimidating for some, but because you're not using up a lot of leather, it's worth trying 
just so that you can get a feel for it, just so that you can learn some of the principles uh, involved in this course. And believe me, there's a lot in this that you can transfer to other areas of leather craft, especially wrapping and folding, stitching, avoiding creases, edge finishing as well on this one. So there's a lot that you can actually transfer. So even if you're not interested in making a handle, there's a lot of transitional skills. Remember the courses are really teaching you technical skills and the excuse is the product being made, okay? So if I want to focus on teaching you a particular skill, I will then focus on, okay, what products can I make with it where we can focus on that skill? What skill have we already done in the courses? What do they need now? What can they use to become more and more advanced? And what project perfectly matches with that skill so they can then hone those skills and improve and learn that craft. So that's you know half the reason I do these courses. Sometimes people can see them as being a bit random, but it's a course specifically designed to showcase a technique, showcase a skill so they can learn that and then adapt it for other things, which uh, a lot of students do very successfully too. Ivar Leathercraft, hello. I hope, hello there, Philip, I hope you are well. Thank you very much, Ivar, I hope you're well too. Uh, da, 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 da. Would the oil of bridle interfere with gluing in the build? That's actually a very interesting question. Personally, I, it can do, if you're using it on the filler, yeah, it can do. Very, very heavily oiled leathers in general. I probably wouldn't use something that was overly oiled or waxed for something like the filler, even though it's stiff. So yeah, good catch on that one. What I would do is make sure the area is scuffed and then I would probably use an alcohol, a little bit of alcohol on a wipe to go over just to de degrease the, the surface of the filler, for example. Um, if you're doing a wrap, then you're gonna be probably needing to wet mold that a little bit. So yeah, it is, it is possible. I mean, most of the strength in these handles is actually in the exterior wrap, holding everything together. Um, so that's the main thing. So does it have to be the strongest bonding glue? No, but the stronger the bond, the better. But yeah, if I was using an English bridle, make sure it's very, very well scuffed and then just go over with pure alcohol on the outside just to degrease the, uh, the fibers on the outer layer. Hello from Argentina. Uh, hi there, I've tried doing a post handle similar to how you've done it where the leather wrap isn't one solid piece. Will you be taking, tackling a single piece wrap in the course as well? Um, the, I'm not sure if what, what you're talking about is this. So in this one, it is one piece. So the whole thing is one piece, if you can see that. I think, I think that's what you're talking about. Apologies if, uh, if you're not. Okay, so we have one more question. Uh, did you create a special jig to punch stitching holes? Now, you may have seen some of my other courses, the Lancet rolled handle, um, the rolled handle used in the Turin Luxury handbag course. Those used a specific jig, whereas it's probably stored away but it's a jig that holds the handle still that supports the seam or the leather that's gonna be made into the seam so that you can accurately prick and then use it to cut along once you've stitched. On this, you know, if you were gonna make a jig to place this inside, you would have to use the patterns to cut out a piece of say 10 millimeter MDF, depending on the size of the handle take into account the external layer of leather as well. So, you know, you'd have to be adding whatever thickness of leather you're gonna be using on the outside and then have something to support it or keep it compressed into the jig so that it's supported. It can be done, but uh, I show a bit of a hack in the course where you don't have to do that. So although you'd think it's necessary to do that in a course like this, uh, we, we don't actually do that in the course. It's actually a very simple workaround. Cool. I'll give that a go then, says Ivo. Thanks. <laughs> no worries. Uh, okay, so do you need to create a specialist jig? No, you don't need to create a specialist jig. Um, we can get around that. 
So thank you for tuning in to this short video about the making of a post handle, a new video course now available on leathercraftmasterclass.com. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notifications for new videos that come out, question and answer videos, course premieres, and everything in between. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.